That's good. Um, I am going to be speaking to you today on Nehemiah 4, okay, and on being bold. Everyone go, ooh. Yeah, and everyone go, nice font as well. I choose my fonts very carefully, and the, 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 P- the, the computer guys get really annoyed with me because they have to install my fonts and stuff. It's annoying. Okay, so we're doing Nehemiah. We're in the middle of a series on Nehemiah, um, and it kicked off two weeks ago with Craig, um, and uh, Craig was talking about builders, um, and then Dell came, and he was talking about team, um, and I'm going to be talking about boldness now. So the first question for you is, have you read it yet? Have you read Nehemiah? So Craig, last time he got like a show of hands. Have you read Nehemiah in the last three months, I think it was? Okay, I'm going to be even more brutal. Have you read any of Nehemiah outside of church since we started this sermon series? Okay, hands up if you read some of Nehemiah. Okay, that's some hands. Who, hands up if you've read all of Nehemiah since we've started this sermon series. Okay, God, when there's such a thing as trying too hard. Okay, I'm just saying. Okay, <laughs> no, that's good work. Um, we don't have time in half an hour to actually go through the whole of Nehemiah. Okay, like to, to like actually teach it to you, the whole thing. Okay, so get your phone out. Everyone get your phone out. Come on, phones. Get your phones out. You've all got phones. If you haven't got a smartphone, fine. But you've all got smartphones. You're all fine. Okay, phone out. Calendar app. I haven't got my phone. Where is it? It's over there. Okay, I'm doing it as well. Okay, calendar app or like alarms app. Okay, three o'clock this afternoon. I'm serious. You're doing this, guys. Okay, okay. Alarm, three o'clock. Okay, this afternoon, because you've had dinner then. Oh, is there football? Okay. If you're watching the football, then six o'clock. If you're not watching the football, three o'clock. Okay, read Nehemiah. Okay, that's fine. You could read Nehemiah while you watch the football, maybe, as well. Anyway, an alarm for this afternoon. Nehemiah is ten pages in my Bible. Okay, in here, ten pages. You can read ten pages. Okay, because then... When we talk about this stuff, rather than it all being completely new to you, you've kind of got a bit of a context, a bit of understanding of what's going on, and then we can kind of point out specifics a bit more effectively. What's this? Yes! I didn't know if people were going to get it straight away. So for those of you who aren't completely familiar, Nehemiah in a nutshell. Ah, that's nice, isn't it? So I'm gonna, I've summarized all of Nehemiah into six points, okay? And I shall read it out to you now. Some dude gets an idea, okay, so Nehemiah has an idea, and his idea is rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And he takes on the task, he inspires people, he pulls them together, um, and they overcome opposition and fear and kind of physical lack of resources and stuff, and they rebuild the walls. Sound good? That sounds good. Okay, we'll dive in a little bit deeper. So, some dude... Gets an idea. Some dude. Okay, I've done that on purpose. Now, I'm a feminist, okay, so this could say some gal or some person, but Nehemiah was a dude, okay? And the reason I've put that, okay, is because it's probably not really that important. I love that you went out to youth to grab food and then came back for the preach. That is the right decision. Well done. Um, The reason is because I don't think it's that important who Nehemiah was, really, And the key message for you here is you don't need to be a leader to be bold. Turn to the person next to you and say, you don't need to be a leader to be bold. And now turn to the person behind you and say, you don't need to be a leader to be bold. Okay, I know everybody who didn't turn around to someone behind them, especially the people in the back row, I noted that. Okay. You don't need to be a leader to be bold. You don't need to be at the front to be bold. Nehemiah, okay, wasn't the king. Nehemiah wasn't in charge of Jerusalem or anything like that. Nehemiah was the cupbearer to the king of Persia. Okay, now Craig talked about what a cupbearer is. It's a kind of weird role. I mean, we don't have Persia or kings of Persia or cupbearers anymore. Some of the translations of what a cupbearer is are like, maybe it's like the chief officer, you know, something like that. But some of the translations are that it's the chief of the butlers. Okay. Does that sound like a in, in particularly impressive title? It does. It does. Well, yeah. I'm, yes. Um, and actually, the Bible is full of stories of people who aren't leaders. Okay. People who aren't inspiring, who aren't powerful, doing amazing things for God, being bold. 
Okay, so you've got, you've got Moses was a murderer. I mean, often overlooked as well. Moses was really scared of public speaking. You know, like he had to get his brother Aaron to kind of, his brother, it was his brother, wasn't it? Yeah, he had to get his brother to come and do all his talking for him, you know. Okay, David was an adulterer. Jesus was an illegitimate son of a carpenter. Mary was a teenage mum. Peter was a fisherman. Okay, the Bible is full of not very brilliant people being bold. Okay, so you don't need to be a leader to be bold. And so if you're not an important person, then presumably to achieve things, you need an important idea. And that's where we get our next exciting slide. I'm not going to make you say all of these to like, everyone because that would be annoying. But turn to the person next to you and say, you need vision to be bold. <laughs> yeah, okay. You need vision to be bold. And we are going to... We, what, so where, what is it now? What's the date today? 18th. Okay, so we're getting quite near the Christmas season, which is exciting, isn't it? So I'm going to have a quick poll here. There are going to be two options, and you have to vote. Okay, what is the best Christmas film? There's only going to be two options. Okay, what is the best Christmas film? Okay, hands up if you think the best Christmas film is Muppets Christmas Carol. Okay, okay, that's good. That means everybody else is voting for the next one. Who thinks the best Christmas film is Die Hard? Yes! Okay, I, I'm in charge, so you can't argue that there are any other Christmas films. So those are the two. So we're about to watch a clip in a second, okay, from Die Hard, because of course. Um, and w it doesn't matter if you've seen Die Hard. What's going to happen now is there's going to be a chap called Harry here. Okay, and Harry is very bold. Okay, let's see Harry be bold for a second. Business. I figure you're here to negotiate. Am I right? You're amazing. You figured this all out already. <laughs> hey, business is business. You use a gun, I use a fountain pen. What's the difference? Let's put it in my terms. You're here in a hostile takeover. You grab us for some green mail, but you didn't expect some poison pill was going to be running around in the building. Am I right? Hans, Bobby, I'm your white knight. Okay, so he's annoying, isn't he? Hans, Bobby. I don't even know what that means. Okay, so he's bold, okay? But the thing is, it's very easy to be bold, but also not actually have a good vision and have a good idea. Okay, and I think he nicely illustrates this bit from Proverbs for us. Okay, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Okay, who's seen Die Hard? Most people have seen Die Hard. It doesn't go very well with Harry, does it? No, it does not go very well with Harry. Okay, because it's no good being bold if you don't have a nice, clear, good direction ahead of you. I'm going to do even more of a faux pas now. I've had a clip from Die Hard. Now I'm going to talk about Brexit. Oh, brutal. Brutal. Okay, and actually, I, well, yeah, I'm actually not making any kind of political point here because everyone's fed up of Brexit. Who thinks Brexit, regardless if you want it or don't want it, who thinks it's currently a bit of a shambles? Yeah, okay, that's like the most unanimous of anything. Okay, and actually... Whether or not you like or dislike Theresa May or whatever, Theresa May's had a clear direction the whole way through. She said, Brexit means Brexit, okay? And she's kind of, she's actually been quite bold at kind of standing there and doing that. And I think kind of the only reason she's still Prime Minister is because she's presenting a clear direction, okay? That's it. No more Brexit. We're done. Okay. So what is Nehemiah? Actually, we're not done. Brexit carries on probably for another 10 years, but I'm done talking about Brexit. Um, so what is Nehemiah's vision? Okay, and his vision is the walls of Jerusalem rebuilt. So I don't know very much about Jerusalem. I know there'll be people here who are very excited about Israel and who know lots about it. I don't know a huge amount. But these are the walls of Jerusalem. Okay, they're, they're quite nice as, as walls go. They've got, I think they've got crenellations. You know those, those bits like up and down? They're called crenellations, you see? Yeah, you've learned something today. Um, I don't think... The real meat of this passage is just about walls, really. Okay, because there's two things happening in the Old Testament when you look at Israel and you look at Jerusalem. One is like Jerusalem's like the home of, of God. Okay, it's where the it's where in the Old Testament where the temple was, it's kind of a really important spiritual physical place. But it's also where God's people are. Okay. And at the beginning of Nehemiah, okay, you get I can't remember the name of him. We could look it up. Who's got Nehemiah open? Let's find it out. Let's read the Bible together. Okay, you've got Han Hanani. There we go. Mr. Hanani comes and he, and, he, and he says to Nehemiah, there is great trouble and shame 
okay, for the people who are in Jerusalem, okay, because the walls have been knocked down, the, the, uh, the gates have been burned, and so they've got, they've got a physical problem, okay, the things are unsafe, but also they've got an internal, a mental problem, they're full of shame, they're like, their dignity's gone. I'm totally, no idea where we are now, let's have a look. And so he takes on the task, okay, because th- the reason I think that vision matters, is it's not just about building some walls, it's also about building up a people, Okay, it's also about restoring dignity to people. Okay. And yeah. And so he takes on the task. Okay. So why is that important? Why is it important that he takes on the task? This is the Persian Empire. It's exciting. See, there's like there's geography, there's politics, it's exciting. Okay, so we've got the Persian Empire here, which is kind of it looks like at that time it pretty much covered most of what we would think of as the Middle East now. And you can see these, these, two, these two places here. So on, the, on this side here, you've got Shushan, which is where the Persian palace is. And on that side, you've got Jerusalem. Okay? And they're about 1,000 miles apart. So that's, like, that's five times the distance between Warrington and Glasgow. Okay? And that's the only kind of distance that you would do if you had some kind of really important reason to be there. Eh? Um, and so 1,000 miles at, at this time, 1,000 miles by like camel takes... I don't know, who knows how fast the camel travels? Anyone? A week? Two weeks? It's a long time, okay? And repairing the walls is not Nehemiah's responsibility. Nehemiah is a cupbearer to the king of Persia in Shushan. He's not a kind of building contractor over in Jerusalem, okay? It wasn't his job. And that is important because there will be many times that God calls you to be bold in things that are not your responsibility. Yeah? An amen there? Okay. Like, we said how, I said how you don't need to be a leader to be bold. Okay. It's really easy to look at, you know, so, well, there's the preacher. Like, we get, maybe there are some new people here today, and you are very welcome if you're a new person here today, and we love you, and we want you to feel welcomed and part of our family. And sometimes when a new person comes, you can be like, oh, maybe I should go and get them a coffee. But, I don't know, I'm not on the coffee team. I'm not on the pastoral team. I'm not on the welcome team. Is that my responsibility? I've had, I've had two things in my life recently where, where I've, I've felt called by God to do something a little bit bold that's not my responsibility. So one, I moved into, I moved into Westie and got very excited about green spaces. Look at this. The green spaces, but ooh, yeah, it's got references. Okay. <laughs> I'm showing the references now. Oh, yes. Okay. But so, so I, I moved into Westie. I'm not the councillor for Westie. I'm not head of the parks department. I'm not the MP. It's not really my job to care about the green spaces, but I felt God gave me a vision to be, to be bold and say, this is what our green spaces should look like. Okay. And another, another thing that happened, I, I was at work and some of my, one of my colleagues was having a really rough time in their personal life, like oh, a while ago. And it's not, as long as someone's safe that I work, I'm a GP if you don't know, as long as someone's safe that I work with, that's kind of where my responsibility ends, you know, like my job isn't to, you know, be more than that, but I just really felt that I could just provide them a little bit of counselling, a little bit of support, and just be there as a friend when that wasn't my responsibility. God wants you to be bold, and sometimes that's going to mean not hiding behind excuses and saying, I can do this. So, Nehemiah, he inspires people to pull together because a bold vision inspires people. Okay, if you've got that, if you've got that clear vision, it pulls people on board with you. Okay, and we've got, we've got Nehemiah 2 now. So, we've got, um, we've got the, the king of Persia. Okay, and he comes to Nehemiah and he says, what do you request? And Nehemiah says, so I prayed to the God of heaven and I said to the king, if it pleases the king... And if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. So his boss is saying, what do you want to do? And he says, please send me, let me go a thousand miles away to do something that is not my job, that is completely unrelated to your culture and religion. And his boss says, how long are you going to be gone? Okay, so his boss, his boss has seen his character, so he knows he's a good bloke, but he's heard his vision. And ultimately, and the most important thing is, he asks doesn't he? He's bold enough to say, 
can I bunk off for like a couple of months? You know, like if we don't, if we don't ask, if we don't take that step of boldness, sometimes things won't happen. Um, and so then in Nehemiah 3, as Del was talking about, team gets built. Okay, And if you read, so Del read the whole of Nehemiah 3 last week, and he made the challenge that you'll never hear the whole of Nehemiah 3 read in a church. And I was quite, I did tell him that I was going to try and read the whole of Nehemiah 3 again this week, and then I had a look, and no, I'm not doing that. So maybe another time. But the point, the reason it's quite a hard read is because it's just full and full and full of lists of names of people that have got inspired Okay, that when he's bold and he's got a clear vision, okay, they've gone, yes, we want to get behind you. And so that takes us on to chapter four. So, so far we've got a great vision, people get inspired, it all goes brilliantly. Is that real life? No. Okay, so Nehemiah 4 brings us back down to earth with a bit of a crunch. Um, And what really happens is this. Um, so you probably may, many of you will probably recognize that sort of, sort of photo. We had Remembrance Sunday last week, and so we were talking about the, the Great War. And this is, this is where people would put their head over the parapet. So they'd put their head over because they've, they've got a vision. They've, they're being bold. There's something they've got to do. But unfortunately, in doing so, that makes you a target. You're suddenly visible. And boldness gets opposed. Okay, Not always, but often, if you if you step out in faith, if you step out and say, I want to do this, there'll be, there'll be reasons, there'll be things that come against you. And so in Nehemiah 4, I'm just going to read a couple of these. Um, when Sambalat heard, it's a good name, Sambalat, when Sambalat heard we were rebuilding the wall, he exploded in anger. Okay, And then Tobiah said, that's right, what do you think they're building? Why, if a fox climbed that wall, it would fall to pieces under his weight. They have us surrounded. They're going to attack. If we heard it once, we heard it ten times. Okay. And we've got three different things that happen as opposition here. Okay. So the top one there, it gets under Sanballat's skin. Okay. And he gets angry. He's like, you're not going to build a wall. Okay. And people will get angry sometimes. When, you, when you're bold and you have a, a clear vision, they will come against you with anger. And then Tobiah, and this is, uh, this is where Toby fits in, because Tobiah is basically the same as Toby. Earlier on, when Toby put his drums together, I said, I don't, good one. Yeah, you put your drums together well there. If a fox got on them, then they'd, then they'd fall apart under his weight. And he went, that is the worst insult I've ever heard. Um, which I agree is fair. But I think that's kind of the point. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it was culturally it was a really good insult. Or maybe it's just a niggly one, isn't it? It's like, oh, you're not very good, are you? You're a good one, you know. Because that's, that's one of the ways people can, can oppose you. They can be discouraging and they can be bullies, you know. And then finally, verse 12, they have us surrounded. They're going to attack. If we heard it once, we heard it ten times. And what's happening there, that's not people are actually attacking them. That's not people saying words against them. That's them saying stuff that's negative about themselves, okay? That's them going around one another and going, mate, we're going to get attacked. And him going, someone's, we're going to get attacked. <laughs> Okay, so when we're bold, sometimes our wor- the worst attackers against us can be ourselves. Okay, I thought that was a good noise. I like that. Um, some of the worst attackers can be ourselves. Okay, and the people they try and ruin the work. They use words. They use physical force, and it threatens the hope and the security of the people of Israel, of, of Jerusalem. So this is the good bit. We've had the. We've had the opposition, but here's the good bit. They overcome. And for this bit, I think it's only appropriate that we now become an American football film together. Okay, who's seen American football films? Okay, first of all, and who understands American football? No one, of course. (laughs) Even the American doesn't really, okay. But we love the bit, okay, there's always these bits here where they're in the locker room, okay. Everyone's dejected. Okay, everyone try and look sad and dejected now. Go on. Okay, that is poor, okay. Okay, everyone's sad, everyone's hopeless, you know. They need 30 touchdowns to score a goal or something, you know, in order to, in order to win, okay. And they go into the locker room and they're just absolutely broken. And then in comes, in comes the, 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 the coach or chef or whatever they have. Like, uh, <laughs> it's, I hadn't planned this with an American on the front row. It makes it so much better. Um, and 
And he comes in, okay, but this is Nehemiah, and he's coming into that broken place, okay? And what I want you guys to do, when, he gets, when, when I give you the kind of the little victory speech, okay, I want you guys to get more, more happy and a bit more cheery and a bit more excited, okay? And at the end, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll shout Sparta or something, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll shout Sparta at the end, okay, cool. Okay, so, um, so I'm Nehemiah, okay? Okay, and I'm coming to the situation where we're worried about the walls and we're worried about getting attacked. Okay, okay, you mate, you mate, with the spears, this is a direct translation, by the way, of, of what's there, ish. Okay, you, okay, get on the wall, okay, with your spears. Okay, you, okay, you've got your, you've got your, your swords, okay, all of you guys with your swords, you get up on the wall there, okay? Okay, you, with the bows, you be ready, okay? Because let's face this, okay, we do not need to be afraid of them, am I right? Am I right? We don't need to be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, okay, who is great and awesome, okay? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to fight for your brothers, for your sons, for your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Sparta! Okay. (laughs) That went good. I I really had not planned it like that. That was great. So... um, (laughs) You don't need miracles to be bold there. Did I do anything miraculous there? Did I pull a a rabbit out of a hat? No. Okay. To be bold, if we've got that clear vision, that alone... Oh, I'm a bit out of breath now. Um, (laughs) That alone can inspire people, okay? Because what happens here, there's not... Oh, I need a miracle now. Um... That was, that, there wasn't a huge miracle. All, the, all that he did, like practically, I mean, okay, so they were worried about getting attacked. So he said, okay, guys, get on the walls. <laughs> like, you know, like it was, a, pra- it was a, a practical solution to a practical problem. But the people knew that God was working, okay? This is, a, I'm not sure exactly where in Nehemiah 4 this quotes from, but it says, our enemies learned that we knew all about their plan and that God had frustrated it, okay? When you are bold... Okay, when you, when you step out, I've had a workplace, Craig told me as well about, he's had, a, he's had a workplace where everyone just knew that he was a Christian. And I've had that, everyone just knew I was different because I was bold enough to be different, to be happy, to not be negative, to not say the, the words about how everyone's going to attack us and constantly be going around being a bit gossipy and, you know, if you're bold and you have that clear vision, people will know that God is working. And so, at the end of Nehemiah, they go through that, and it's a win. They've rebuilt some walls. Is that good? It is good. It's good they've rebuilt some walls. I think there's, I'm, I'm really happy about them rebuilding the walls. That's good. That's the whole point of the story, isn't it? But there's, there's, there's another bit as well to it, okay? And this is a quote from a chap called Zig Ziglar, which is a great name. I mean, that makes Adam Della sound really a lot less good, doesn't it? I think Zig Ziglar is the way ahead. So this guy was a motivational speaker in America, but he was also a Christian, and so there was a lot of he used a lot of like Christian stuff when he was kind of motivating people. What you get by reaching your destination is not nearly as important as what you will become by reaching your destination. So sometimes it's the journey that matters. Because boldness has a partner, persistence. We will say that to each other. Tend to someone say, boldness has a partner, persistence. Okay. It's great. It's easy to stand up and give that speech. Okay. Like and in the American football films, they always stand up and give that speech once. And it's always completely unrealistic. Okay. Because that is one speech. Okay. And they have 50 football matches or American football. Whatever. Are they matches? Games? Games. There we go. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the team doctor for Warrington Town Football Club, which is obviously a, a position of great power and influence. Um, and I once actually went into the, into the uh, at half time, I once went into the changing room because we were losing 5 1. And we went in at half time. And at the time, we were in between managers. So it was just a bit of a mess. And everyone was a bit hopeless and dejected. And I went in. I said, Look, guys. You really want this now? You've looked so angry the last five minutes. Okay, you can do this. I believe that you can go out there, okay, and we're going to win this 6-2, okay? We won it 6-3, 
okay? Like, as in, and like, everyone was coming. It was, it was like someone out remember the Titans or whatever. It was great. But I did that once. We lost another 15 games that season, okay? The reality is that you've got to keep on, okay? So these are all verses from verse 14. We kept at it, repairing and rebuilding the wall. The whole wall was soon joined together and halfway to its intended height because the people had a heart for the work. And then again, a few verses later, we went back to the wall and we went to work. A few verses later, we kept working from first light until the stars came out, half of us holding lances. And it's not just that they worked hard, okay? They were, they were hindered by, by the plan that, that ne- Nehemiah had come up with. So you've got, you've, got this, uh, you've got this, I don't know, Renaissance painting, and you can see the guy holding the rock, okay? He's got like a little, a little spadey spatula thing, a trowel. There we go, he's got a trowel. But he's also, on his, on, on his side here, you can see he's got a sword. Has anyone ever held a, a metal sword, like a full like steel sword? Okay, are they heavy? Yeah, exactly. And when you're doing lifting like this, like this, that massive rock there, okay, anyone ever lifted paving slabs? I know Les has, you've lifted my paving slabs. The last thing you want to do is also be carrying a big heavy metal sword. Okay, and you, so part of what he did is he said that everyone had to be having a weapon and also their tools at the same time. So sometimes boldness is re- going to require us to put in that, that extra bit of hard work. I have a few more verses for us, and then I've got a thing I'd like to do together that's a bit bold. Okay, and then we're done. Sound good? Yes. Okay, so we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Okay, it's like a foundational verse, okay, of Christian life is that, is that stuff's hard, life is hard, and being bold and constantly telling people about a vision is hard, okay? But that, that grows us. The journey can be as important as the destination. And then Nehemiah, I love this bit. So you, if you read all of Nehemiah, they rebuild the wall, okay? And then chapter 13, in the 32nd year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, I'd return to the king, and sometime later I asked his permission and came back to Jerusalem, okay? So he's done it all. He's done this amazing thing of rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. And then a few years later, he's like, okay, I need to go back. I need to go and see how things are. I need to check up and I need to keep on pushing. And pretty much the whole of the last chapter is him telling people off because they've kind of, they've, they've fallen back on that kind of original vision that they had together. The point being that he perseveres, he keeps on pushing. And then finally, I just, this last little verse, it's just a little one. And it's just simple and it's just a simple little phrase. But I just think sometimes if, if all we did is just have that verse, okay, as for you, Brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. Absolutely turn to your neighbor and say that one with more passion than you've said any of the other ones to your neighbor. As for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. Okay. And so I'm pretty much done. Okay, I'm going to pop this over here because we're going to do a song in a bit.